Hello, hello! Cambly continua com a maior promoção do ano, 50% de desconto em qualquer plano anual, tanto do Cambly quanto do Cambly Kids. Tá valendo muito, muito a pena. E eu acho que você não deve perder essa oportunidade. A gente tem que se juntar e agradecer pelas coisas boas. E isso é uma coisa boa. Gente, o Cambly é uma plataforma online de inglês que tem professores de inglês, obviamente, nativos de inglês, online 24 horas por dia. Então, você que estava esperando uma oportunidade, querendo um sinal da vida, do mundo, aqui está a sua oportunidade. Eu acho que vale muito a pena e a gente não pode deixar de aproveitar isso. Então, vai aqui no link que eu vou deixar direitinho na descrição do episódio. Coloca o código também que eu deixei e... É isso, bora aproveitar! Hello, hello, hey, beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of Inglês no Cru Rádio. My name is Foster, and as always, I am here with... Alexia. The one, <laughs> the only, the beautiful, magnificent... Alexia. Hi, Foster. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. You are very welcome. So today, Alexia, and probably for the next couple of days on the show, we are going to talk about one of your favorite things in the world. What? Chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> you do love chocolate? But no, this week on the show, we are talking about Going on vacations. Yes. Taking a break. Holidays. Taking some time to rest and so, relax. So, I have a first question. Yeah. Um, what's the difference between vacation and holidays? I knew that you were going to ask that. I know. Yeah. To be honest, I think the technical answer is... Holidays are like established holidays that are usually um, Christmas. more traditional or religious holidays. For example, Christmas, Easter, things like that. And then vacations is just you are going on a trip or taking a break. Also, if I'm not mistaken, um, British people use holidays instead of vacations. Yeah, and honestly... Most Americans use both of these relatively interchangeably. So, for example, if I say, oh, next week I'm going on vacation, or next week I'm going on holiday. Mm. It's I, almost the same, yeah. Almost the same. I probably say vacation more often, but they both work. Yes, perfect. Okay, and we are talking about vacations, holidays, trips, whatever <laughs> you want to call it, because... Alexia and I recently took our first vacation in a very, very long time. Yeah, last time was the beginning of the year. Uh, we went to Lisbon just for two days, I think. Yeah, I don't know if I would consider that a vacation. This was our first real vacation in in one year. Um, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think you're right. Yeah, so I was pretty excited because, I mean, after seven months without seeing each other and all, <laughs> like, the pressure and without knowing Foster would come back here. Knowing um, if, Foster if Foster would come back. would come back here. If or when. Yes. And I was like, Foster, can we take, like, five days just to relax, including the weekend, which... Is only like three days off from work. <laughs> Do you think it's possible? And then we found an amazing place to go. Very rural. Rural. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to try that word one more time? Rural. <laughs> okay. So rural. I say rural. <laughs> rural. <laughs> say it again. Rural. Rural. Yeah, this is probably the most difficult word in English. There's a very common tongue twister in English. So we're saying the word rural, right? Yes. Rural. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Try to say rural juror. What? So a juror is someone on a jury. Juror. 
rural juror. Someone in a what? On a jury, someone that decides the conviction of a criminal case. Ah, no jury. Okay, juror. Yeah. So you have rural juror. Okay, <laughs> rural juror. That's pretty good. Okay, juror is okay, but rural. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Alexia is having a fun time with this. In all honesty, the word rural is a good word to avoid in English. Yeah. Because it is super difficult even for Americans and native English speakers We to can say. just say like we went to the countryside. Yeah, we were out in nature. We were in the countryside in a very beautiful place. And the idea was just to take a short break because from real life yeah yeah 2020 has been a very long difficult year and the majority of 2020 we were apart so although times are still very difficult right now i think we definitely deserved a short break yes and i saw this trip as a as a chance to reconnect individually and reconnect with each other, reconnect with nature, and like just spending time enjoying ourselves. Yeah. That's it. And Foster and I, we love going on hikings. <laughs> we love going on hikes. On hikes. Or you could say we love to go hiking or simply we love hiking. Yeah, we love to go hiking. Mm -hmm. And we did a lot of that. It was pretty cool. It was very, very cool. So just two quick things, Alexia. First, this was our first trip with Buddy. Yes. Our crazy, now seventh-month-old puppy. Mm -hmm. So we will talk about that later, but that was an adventure in and of itself. Yes. And secondly, where'd we go? We went to a place called um, Ponte da Barca. And at Ponte da Barca, there is a small village called Vila Chan de Santiago. That's the name where we stayed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's one hour and a half from Porto. We rented a car and it was pretty, pretty easy to get there. Yeah. No problems at all. Yeah, so I believe it was northeast of Porto. Yes, Correct. it was already in Jerez, the national park. Yes, so Jerez is a national park in the north of Portugal. Yes. So we were in that area, which is a beautiful area of Portugal. It was our yes. first time. Very close to the border of Spain. Yes, Galicia was mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we wanted to cross, but with COVID, COVID, <laughs> COVID. I say COVID. Yeah. COVID. Um, everything's a little strange, so we didn't want to like cross. And Foster is still waiting on his residency card, so we didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, that's another story. <laughs> okay, so Alexia, before we get into traveling during a pandemic, traveling with the puppy, all of these different topics. I would like to ask you, I believe we went to, so we went to Ponche da Barca, yeah. one, Ponche de Lima. Yes. So many Ponches in Portugal. Yes. <laughs> then we went to Arcos de Valdevez. Yes. And there's also a bridge in that city as well. <laughs> Where else? Ermida. Ermida. Not a success, that one. And... Yeah. Anywhere else that we're forgetting? No, because we had two days with horrible rain, so we decided to stay in. It rained a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay, out of those places, which would you say was your favorite? Uh, Ponte de Lima. Ponte de Lima. Yes. And what did you like about it? Um, I think it's a nice mixture between the old Portugal, like Ponte de Lima is the oldest village of portugal yes that's crazy in this case i would say the oldest village in portugal in portugal hey buddy <laughs> he's complaining with my dad so <laughs> so the oldest village in portugal so 
lot of history there. I mean, every step that you take and look around you, there is something really, really significant. 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 Yes, mm -hmm. every step you take, there is something significant. Yes. Or you could say, every step every you take, take, every move you make, every na 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 na. So in. Omega, I'll be watching you. Is that right? In Ponte de Lima, there is a Roman bridge that is still there today. Obviously yeah. been reconstructed several times. But I would argue, Alexia, that is the oldest thing that you have ever set foot upon. Yes, it was from século I, right? Uh-huh, and how would we say first, that in English? First century. The first century. <laughs> I was so confused right now. <laughs> the first century. And yeah, it's right there. And not only that bridge, but like all the churches and all the buildings, the, the old fort. Fortress. Yeah, fortress. And because you, you guys have to remember that Portugal was invaded by Romans, Moros. Spanish people and every most most of everyone from <laughs> Europe. So <laughs> it was really hard, but yes. we stand. We are here at Chile. Yeah, well, it's debatable talking about who invaded Portugal and you know who was originally here. I'm hmm? sorry, Portuguese one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that is a topic for another day. But I think, Alexia, that kind of sets the scene for the next few episodes. We will talk about the importance of taking a break. I think we can talk about the importance of connecting with nature and connecting with old, ancient things. Yes, and the most important for me is reconnecting with us like as individuals. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Mental health is everything. And then some other crazy things like traveling during a pandemic. Yes, we can talk about that. And traveling with a dog. Yes, we can talk about that. Debatable if those things are good for mental health or not. <laughs> but that's what we will talk about this week on the show. As usual, we love talking about travel. But this week will be a little bit different. Anything else, Alexia? No, just stay tuned. And that's it. <laughs> Okay, as always, keep up the good, good fight. And as well. Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do Inglês de Necro Rádio. É muito bom ter você juntinho assim de nós. Faz muito, muito carinho no nosso coração, digamos assim. Então você que está interessado em saber mais sobre os nossos produtos e saber mais sobre a gente, o que, que a gente oferece para vocês em relação a estudo, a challenge a curso, vá lá no inglesdenecro.com e você pode ver mais sobre as worksheets, por exemplo. Yeah. If you want to really improve your English, if you want to learn more about the ways you can do that and just connect with us on a deeper level, go to inglesdenecro.com and as always, keep up the good fight and lose well. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>